Hey everybody, welcome to my first part of this general equilibrium series. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I didn't do any general equilibrium in undergrad. This is mostly for grad students, or if you're at a school that does some pretty heavy duty math work, maybe you're doing it as an undergrad. There's nothing overly fancy here. I just never saw it until later. Uh, here's what we got. Partial equilibrium is when you solve for a demand function or you solve for profit maximizing behavior and you leave it at that. General equilibrium is when you see what happens when you substitute the firm's answers into the consumer's answers and see how they interact with each other. Find the prices at which both of their behaviors are stable. So I'm doing it simple. Got one worker, one firm. The worker can supply capital and labor to the firm, which the firm can purchase or rent from the worker. The worker gets utility from leisure and consumption. They're consuming the product of the firm. So let's define our variables. Labor is L. I'm going to endow my worker with one unit of time. And so his leisure is one minus L. Capital, we'll call K. And the good, I'm gonna use two notations. I'm gonna say X if the consumer eats it. Q is what the firm makes. So both of those are the same thing. Uh, wage, we'll call W. Rent for capital is R. Price for the good is P. And we'll have a Lagrange multiplier through all this for lambda. So what do I wanna solve for? I wanna solve for labor. That's a really funky L. I want to solve for labor, capital, and my production good, X or Q, however you want to call it, uh, wage, rent, price, and Lagrange multiplier. Seven variables. And so I need to figure out how to mess with my consumer problem and my firm problem to solve for all seven of those things. Once I do, I've got my general equilibrium. So moving forward, this video, I'm gonna show you how to get a system of seven equations and seven unknowns. In my next video, we'll solve for L, K, and X as functions of prices. Uh, and then in the, in the next video after that, we'll show how to pick up where we left off to solve for all the prices and the, all that stuff. So. Let's do, I told you this is gonna be a simple example, so we're gonna assume everything's just Cobb Douglas. Uh, let's say for our consumer, utility from labor and eating good X is equal to one minus L to the alpha X to the beta. Notice labor enters negatively because the worker would rather be using leisure and labor is the opposite of that. And let's give them a budget constraint. The price times the quantity of good X is equal to the worker's labor wages plus the worker's capital wages. Now, I could make someone else own capital or I could add taxes or have other kinds of entities or whatever. I've got this situation though with just one worker, one firm. And I told you that the worker is the owner of the L and the K. So that's what the worker's budget constraint looks like. So how do we go about solving this? Let's set up a Lagrang our Lagrangian equation. That's one minus L to the alpha not K, sorry, X to the beta equals lam plus lambda times PX minus WL minus RK. Now I'm going to assume at the front of this that my alphas and betas are well enough behaved that I don't have to worry about corner solutions. I'm assuming interior solutions, I'm doing, gonna do first order conditions not Kuhn Tucker conditions. Uh, if that's something you need to worry about in your class, then this is only a start for you. So if I'm only looking for first order conditions, not Kuhn Tucker conditions, let's see, that's DL or D Lagrangian DL equals zero. And 
d Lagrangian dx equals zero. Alpha times one minus L to the alpha minus one times negative one times x to the beta. Uh, let's see, minus lambda w equals zero. Now I'm going to mess around the negatives a little bit here. I'm going to get rid of a few pieces just for convenience. And it comes out to look like that. All right, next bit for the derivative with respect to x, beta, one minus alpha, sorry, one minus l to the alpha, x to the beta minus one equals lambda p. Okay, so our consumer problem is set up. We've done all the economics here, and I've already got three of my equations I need. We've got a budget constraint, and we've got two choice-making equations, or two first-order conditions. Those three equations are the first three that I need in order to solve for LK, lambda, WRP, oops, sorry, that was an X, LK, X, WRP, and lambda. All right, now let's skip over to the firm's problem. Let's see what else we got. For the firm, I'm gonna say that Q, which remember is gonna to have to be X, this is the production good, some function of labor and capital, which is labor to the gamma, capital to the delta. All right, uh, let's see, so profit then, is equal to price times quantity, so P, L to the gamma, K to the delta, minus costs, and I said that his only costs were the variable costs from the firm, so RK minus WL. Price times quantity minus costs, total revenue minus total costs, there you go. Uh, let's see. Again, I'm assuming gamma and delta are sufficiently well behaved that we're looking for first order conditions. So d pi dl equals zero, which means we're gonna have a gamma pl with the gamma minus one k to the delta equals w d pi dk equals zero, means we're gonna have a delta P to the uh, times L to the gamma, K to the delta minus one equals R. And now our firm is all set up. We've got a few equations here. One, we've got the production function, which is that Q equals L to the gamma K to the delta. And we've got these first order conditions. Okay. Now, I had seven variables, so I need a seventh unknown, and this is one that sometimes you'll overlook. This is one of the big links between the two. The market clearing condition, which is just that the X that the consumer eats is equal to the Q that the firm makes. And that just means that in equilibrium, there's no extras of our good floating around, and that's our seventh equation. So there we have it, seven equations seven unknowns thanks for watching part one you guys in part two like i said i'm going to show how to solve for l k and x as functions of prices and then in part three i'll show how to solve for prices as functions of parameters such as alpha beta delta gamma uh, thanks for watching guys good luck out there happy econing